Welcome all you Plus Two Comedy Modifiers to another episode of the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. I'm your host as always, TV's Noah Houlihan, and before we get to our fantastic episode recorded at GKE, I have to say some things. This is episode 200 of the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. Thank you so much to everyone who has supported this. If you've been listening since episode one or episode 199 or 166, there was a weird issue with the numbering. Thank you so much for listening. We couldn't have done it without you. I mean, we could have done it without you, but it would have been a really stupid thing to do and a kind of a waste of time. So thank you so much for listening. We're now watching on YouTube because we're a web show now about that. Um, we were supposed to do a retrospective for episode 200, where it was just me and Will kind of talking about the journey of Plus Two Comedy. Uh, unfortunately, we had a convention this weekend and we had no time to actually record it. So instead, episode 200 is from the Geeky Kink event. And uh, we, we weren't allowed to have cameras there. So I'm gonna go away in a little bit and a picture's gonna come up and uh, you, you can look at it or you can do something else, but there's not gonna be anything visual about this episode. Uh, on top of that, our guest was a hypnotist uh, who didn't show up. So uh, we grabbed someone from the crowd and uh, he looked a lot like me, uh, which you're not gonna be able to tell um, because there's no video. Uh, but we talk about it a lot, that'll be enjoyable. So, this isn't what we wanted for episode 200, but uh, it feels very plus two comedy that the wheels fell off and we still came up with a really great episode. So please enjoy this episode and we'll do the retrospective sometime very soon. So now, without any further ado, take it away. Who's ready for a podcast? Woo! Awesome. We are live from GKE. Uh, we are two of nine people still alive at GKE. Everyone else is, is dead asleep because they were up all night torturing each other, which takes a lot out of you. It yeah. does. It does. Uh, I am your host, as always, TV's Noah Houlihan, uh, joined by the bottom to my top, no, Mr. Will Lane. way incorrect. <laughs> How you doing, Will? Uh, uh, <laughs> a little sad about turnout um this I guess is it is 10 a.m it, it is 10 a.m at a kink convention this is way better than i thought we were doing <laughs> <laughs> we have we, we have four people here and two of them are paying attention so we're doing awesome <laughs> <laughs> we're doing great our guest this week was supposed to be baron voltage hypnotist mm -hmm. uh but i don't see him maybe Which, he listened to the podcast and found out my opinion of hypnotists. This is true. Will is horribly afraid of hypnotists. Huh? Uh, so what he doesn't know is... Oh, he's already here and I'm Voltage living in Voltage is a... already here. I can't see him. But he's removed himself from no. your mind. Uh, so enjoy that. He's sitting right next to you and you were unaware of that. We, we had a hypnotist on uh, like 100 episodes ago. And we're like, oh, we'll have him do like some hypnosis. And... Uh, Hyp hypnotists are basically supervillains. Mm -hmm. They they have the power to enter your mind and, and steal memories <laughs> and force you to do things. And uh, we ended up having two people hypnotized, and they thought they were us, mm -hmm. which I thought was interesting. And we made them host the show. And they they kind of nailed it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they were really good at it. They, it was one of our best episodes because <laughs> we were gone if <laughs> we had other people do things. Uh, so yeah, so this podcast is usually very interview-based. Uh, so if somebody wants to come up and talk to us, you're more than welcome to. If not, we will just ramble about the events of this con. Uh, Scuba Noah. Scuba Noah. <laughs> oh, I didn't recognize you without glasses. <laughs> it's a key part of the cosplay. Oh, yes. Well, here's the thing. So can I. I can pull the Clark can off as well. <laughs> and it's because we look alike that we can we can manage that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, is it oh, going to so mess with you if I touch yeah, these? Yeah, that, that, those are the controls for the lights and all. No, but I mean, like, I'm not going to horribly ruin your programming. No, no, I can it, just press just, stuff. Just all right, point for, this away. For, for the folks at home, yeah. uh, we have an audience member who's joined us who looks yeah, like me. There's a lot of explanation that needs to. <laughs> yeah. He looks like me, and he's, he has a remote control costume. 
They can't just make there them do go. stuff. It's uh, it's, it, it's an infrared sensor, so you got to point it directly uh, at it. Uh, I see. I'm trying to do a Genos from One Punch Man. Oh, okay. I got it. I there got it. Go. I got yeah. it. It's not. I actually oh, just there you go. I made them green. I finished One Punch Man like rather recently. Oh, that okay. show was great. It, it is a fantastic show. Yeah. If if you haven't seen One Punch Man, other people in this room. <laughs> Uh, it's the story of a man who can defeat anyone with one punch, and and, and the to... frustration that comes along with this. Exactly, and the need to get groceries is actually a major. Plot it is a major theme show. throughout the show. You're blue now. <laughs> All right, I'm done. That was fun. <laughs> Glad I could help. Yeah. So so thank you so much for uh, for coming up here. Sure. Uh, are you purely just an attendee? Because you said it says guest on your badge. Oh yeah. So, so I, I helped out with a couple of things. Um, the panel that was right before yours. Um, my fiance is doing the this the, morning. The, no, the one that was this morning. Jeez, no, that would that would, that would be awful. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's really it's a bad time slot. It's, yeah. yeah, it's a it's a miserable one. Um, <laughs> no, the one you guys did um, the tentacle the, one? The, the beyond the tentacle um, presentation. Uh, before that, it was um, negotiation and LARP, and so it was all about just just essentially how kink and LARP play together and what those things are so that's why i, I, d- I don't think i saw that on the schedule that yeah. sounds really interesting it, w- it was well i saw negotiation and kink i thought it was like a talking to your partner kind of deal i didn't know like larp was, it, it, involved. It was involving with role play and larping and all, all that sort of thing now when you say because to me i hear larp and i think boffer swords and spell packets mm-hmm. but yep. it's so that is what we're talking about so not, ex- know, not yeah, exactly because technically you... if like you're a sexy cop so you're so still larping it's just like a different s- so yeah. technically, that's like a subset called like Boffer LARP. So it's it's its own sort of thing. It's it's heavily combat focused, and then there's ones that are more like role play focused. So if right. you've ever played D anD D, it's it's oh, like yes. the day where it's like you're in town rather than the day where you're out killing things, yeah. and rolling dice to get through three minutes of combat. Gotcha. I was five years into a very uh, role play heavy Vampire the Masquerade group. So <laughs> nice, very cool. Uh, so I'm, I'm guessing that means you are a LARPer. Uh, not actually, no. No, uh, you're just uh, full think... of lies. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I helped out uh, with a couple things like that, and, and I was supposed to help with with the gaming room, but they just never got back in touch with me. So, I did help them unload their is, car at least. I was supposed to say, "There's a gaming room." Yeah, there's like, a gaming room. Board like, board the board game. What? Oh, okay. No, I, I didn't was... know that. Where's that? It's right next to the ball pit. Yeah. Oh man. Oh well. Okay. They were doing a lot of like strip Magic the Gathering. Yeah, those were all well, the they, games happening in there. Okay. They tried strip Magic the Gathering, but the boxes never came in, so they had to order. They yeah. Anyway, it was a whole. Long oh, time. so there was no draft or anything. Yeah, the, the boosters <laughs> were not there for the draft, so they had to find. Yeah, it was a whole thing. I don't even know. Oh God, I love convention life. Yeah. that that <laughs> stuff happens all it's, the time. Yeah, I don't, there's always putting out fires. Yeah, that, that's exactly what it is. That, the plus two comedy mo- motto is: it's not here, but it'll be fine. <laughs> so. <laughs> Because I don't think we've ever canceled a panel like completely. No, we've just turned it into something else. Yeah, we're just like we'll do something else, or we'll you know we'll figure something out. So, so uh, what name would you like to go by on the show? I understand yeah. if you don't want to no, use your no, real no, my name. my real name is fine. I can't go with my Muggle name, uh, Shane. Oh, okay, Shane. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll muggle name. You are last name for now. Gonna <laughs> be fine. Scuba Noah. That's, that's that's fine. <laughs> locked in up here. <laughs> that's so. okay. Hey, you're a scuba diver, right? Uh, an instructor, actually. Oh, really? All right, so that is your profession. Uh, was. <laughs> uh, was. Was. I, I, I Did you get the, the bends? Yeah, too many, no, I didn't too get many bends. students got the bends. Thankfully, no no students ever got bent, so that's, that's uh, at least as far as I know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the ones that left at the bottom of the pool, I never really cut back up with. Well, they yeah. drowned, Noah. It's a different thing. <laughs> Only had to do a few rescues, actually. But, you <laughs> yeah. know. Um, no, so that's what I used to do. Um, I, I work at a, um, a car company, but I won't get into it anymore. More than that. So yeah. Okay. For, for, for various yeah, I'd rather talk about scuba diving. That's yeah. way cool. Yeah, <laughs> How do you become a scuba diving instructor? Uh, so, so you need to, you know, obviously do the basics, get certified, and do about a hundred dives or so, as well as do all the various training for it. It's essentially a lot of just learning how to how to teach people the skill, and they just kind of leave it up to you to figure out your own style. Yeah, it seems because uh, I'm weird. Scuba yeah, yeah. certified, and I did it in a day, and that seemed wrong. Um, you might have been talking about the. Um, they they usually call it like the the tri scuba thing where you, they throw you in a pool for like 30 40 minutes mm-hmm. and then throw you off the back of a boat and say great have fun and send some instructor or dive master to follow you yeah. along. Yeah, well they did it I did uh two classes. Okay, so that's that's the scuba diver certification there we go. Uh, in, in massive air quotes. Um but that's <laughs> the one that has to be re- renewed every single year. Okay. And then there's So the, that's that's probably been up for a while. Uh, right. Now. And then there's the open I water I should stop scuba diving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did knock it off. Stop taking those kids. <laughs> We're going in the lake, guys. Let's go. 
you say that, but like every year, there's always another story, usually out of Florida. Um, yeah, I know, right? Well, part of the, there's a lot of cave diving there. And about three, four years ago, there was a story around Christmas time of a guy who just barely had the basic certification, takes his teenage son diving in some cave that's like extremely deep, and then neither of them came back. Um, wow. Yeah. So they it, probably lived down there. They, they, they decided <laughs> just, to, to like stay. Like Gollum hiding yeah. in the cave oh, down it's there. It's interesting that they decided to stay down yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. They must have set up a fine summer home. <laughs> I don't even have a scuba tank. I just have a giant billows. I have a hobo pump, and it just goes down steampunk style. Just got to hope that the guy up top doesn't get tired. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, it seems like. He drinks a lot of moonshine. <laughs> any of those fields that, like, require training, but, like, there's no system in place to check the training this happens because uh, uh, I'm involved in professional wrestling. And okay. This is also very common where mm. it's like, all right, we have a school. All right, I think I've been taught enough that I could teach this. <laughs> I need to make money, so I will open a school. Oh, dear. Uh, and then the person they train has the same thought. <laughs> and so, like, you get so further and further away from actual training that it's just some guy like, all right, yeah, fall over a few times. You got it. You got it. Go out there, make some money. <laughs> yeah, thankfully there's there's a little a little more rigor for for this uh, for the training for scuba instruction. They'll they'll actually bother to to make sure that you absolutely know those life saving skills down pat. The rest of it, they're a little like ah eh, okay, um, but for the most part, they they you know the skills of, of keeping somebody alive. Those ones they have to have down pat. The rest, um, you know, they're like yeah, you figure out how to make this make sense to somebody, and um, here's some tips. But yeah, do what you want. <laughs> Actually, no. Now that I think about it, I went scuba diving once, and and what I remember being taught was this means stop, mm -hmm. this means let's go over there, oh and this means I can't breathe. Did, did they go over this signal? D yeah, I'm okay. That means everything's a okay. A okay. Everything's, everything's okay. okay. <laughs> but I remember being like, so what happens if I can't breathe? It's like you will not be able to breathe. I was like, no, no, no. I don't think you understand <laughs> what I mean. I love doing that. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Now when you say no. once I inform you what happens next, it's like uh, <laughs> they, oh, wait, that's like shrug. that's actually required in that training for that <laughs> for for any going out in the water, out in the ocean, and, and doing that's one of the skills you actually have to teach that one. Yeah, yeah. That <laughs> seems real important. That being said, I was in a pool, so I think I'd be fine. <laughs> but still, like before, yeah, yeah before but they're still, like, have some fun and have a good time. No, they we teach you how to do. Like you're supposed yeah. to have done that one. Yeah, that seems real important. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're supposed to come up to your buddy, tap them on the shoulder, and signal that kind of like throat cutting signal. Yeah. I'm out of air, and then then the, it's a forward motion with your hand back and forth, saying you share air. Yeah, give me. Yeah, <laughs> you're basically like, give me some air. Give me uh, some. And then there's an extra. Then there's an extra cylinder. You know, an extra regulator, and you just pass that over to the person, and then they start breathing off of it and yes it's, it's no big deal when, when i did it that we were sharing an air tank <laughs> it, uh, what the, like like you know how there's a spare regular we were just both using it oh, it was oh, it was bad was the tank like on the bottom of the pool or something with a really long hose like what? <laughs> no no i just had to stay close to this dude as we, we oh it was, oh. It was my <laughs> scuba school and i it, I, <laughs> I taught noah that you have to do the drinking signal and that means that toothless pete fell asleep at the billows <laughs> Uh, then what's the tank for? <laughs> it makes you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> just there, not plugged into anything. Yeah. Just on the bottom. Yeah, it's for aesthetics only. Like, if, if it really comes down to it, just open it up and breathe off it like Sonic the Hedgehog mm -hmm. with the bubbles at the bottom. Yeah. yeah. That actually can work. <laughs> not even If you have a, enough flow from, like, a tank or something, you yep. could totally breathe off the bubbles of a tank, like, at the bottom of the pool or something. I don't like my chances on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's uh, not You mean a smarter, more competent person could. <laughs> it's honestly just shove your face in it and breathe. Um, like, Seems too complicated. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> Had to do something. Now it's too much effort. So, so what else have you done to the con? Um, so, so I, I'm one of those people that's incredibly shy for the most part. I, yeah, obviously I volunteered for this, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, d due to no one else being, it's true. That's true. It's, it's kind of like peer pressure in the shower. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm incredibly shy and I usually don't do a whole lot here. Um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love learning about all the different uh, things. I love learning about electro play, uh, and, and rope and all that and how to do those things. Um, and I'm very happy to do that for people, but none of it like calls to me and makes me want to go out and do them. Like I'm not like, oh, I have to shock somebody today. Like, that's yeah, not a... <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> I don't wake up with a particular craving. So, um, did you go to the shy person meetup? I didn't actually. Too shy. Yeah, yeah exactly. Shy. No, um, some of my friends did. Um, well, uh, like I didn't get to go because we were doing other things, but I was told that there was like a hundred people there. And I was <laughs> like, that seems way too intimidating <laughs> yeah. for a shy person. Yeah. Oh god. I, I think I went to it la last year or. Um, 
GKNE because that used to be a thing. Uh, there used to be a Northeast mm-hmm. version. The Northeast variant. one, yeah, yeah, the Northeast variant mm-hmm. of it. Um, so yeah, I just um, I I went I I did the the Star Trek holodeck malfunction. That was that was fun. Now yeah, you need to explain that because okay, we yeah, had I, an yep. argument about this. Sure, because I read it. And it was like, yeah, if you want to go and pretend that you're, you know, Starfleet officers in a holodeck malfunction, but there was no like rule. It's like just add that to your weekend. <laughs> just pretend that's happening. Essentially, yeah. In a, in a way, it's sort of like an additional LARP. So so it's one of those things that like other events they've had like uh, a hunt thing where you you opt in and basically there's some other mechanic, some other game sort of element to being here. Right. Uh, this one. It, it was kind of clever. If you are you guys Star Trek nerds, I am. Fantastic. No one knows okay. nothing. Uh, no one knows nothing. I'm good, not a trekker. Right. All right. <laughs> yes, as, as as in your earlier comedy you said, yeah. Um, and someone, you know, callbacks. Yeah. Callbacks. Callbacks. Callbacks are always good. Um, so what it is 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 essentially you are all now. Uh, the joke is you're adding this layer of there is a, the holodeck malfunction throughout the entire con, uh, and other players essentially have like a little card that. Uh, hold on, it's not visible on mine right now. There, so it's you not going to be visible on this area. podcast. I know, all. right? So a little card here that basically says lets people know you are part of the game. Okay. Um, okay. And then you have little um, cards well, you have here. Little stats. Oh. Right. You got little stats that you can fill out, and they have these little cards here um, that are essentially things you can do. So people come up and they go, "Hey, what are you interested in?" It's essentially a way of inviting people to come and speak to you. Um, okay. That's and then cool. these little cards essentially <laughs> tell people what you're interested in. Yeah, read that one out. That's great. Uh, it, well, okay. It says punish them until they agree that they can see well, what's, five what's lights. What's the title of the card? There are four lights. Yeah. yeah. Here. Oh, okay, all right. Yeah, yeah, which is kind of... Good reference, good reference. Because yeah. like, you're well, psychologically action. torturing them. It's also a Star Trek episode now. Yeah, it's a, it's a very on. good episode. Oh. <laughs> I'm not a trucker. <laughs> <laughs> We've established. <laughs> there's like, Okay, so there's more of this. Though. To me, it just seemed like they were taking what could be for some people an already social uh, awkward social situation, mm-hmm. and then also you have to act extra weird. <laughs> so, so it's it's just kind of a, an option thing, and then they also had a, a, a themed party um, that they, they called Ten Forward um, nice. at you know the bar in Star yeah. Trek. No, it doesn't get that. Yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's very apparent but, by but the blank do. expression on his face. <laughs> um, and the, and they serve variants of like, blood wine, Romulan ale. It was essentially, you know, this is a Drinking and having fun, and a lot of people having sex in the room, and that was fun. Yes, so, yeah, no, that was that was that was a good time. Um, was so, there Klingons having sex in the room? Uh, someone did dress as a Klingon, oh, so they had perfect, like the they paint they uh, did some makeup for the forehead ridges, and uh, did they, they break they, any hips? No, they did not break a any. Concern hips. with Klingon human sexual interaction, it, I hear. Yeah, one of the Klingon cards was to uh, I, what's that? That walk that gauntlet of pain thing, oh. and so people lined up with like floggers and things, and <laughs> we're just you know beat the. Beat the crap out of them as they went through. It was, it was a good time. Um, you know, all consensual, obviously, but you know, right, right, right. That's, that's primary concern always here. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I usually play these the, the con wide games. <laughs> yeah, you but, didn't get in on this but one. But I did no? not get on this one. <laughs> yeah, you should have been they, at ten forward last night. They're that was usually a lot of fun. much simpler. The last one we went to was that vampire one, and the rules were. Uh, you're at a vampire party, but your teeth are crappy dollar store teeth. So, <laughs> so try not to talk and expose them. And that was the whole game. I don't remember this. At that all. was Dexcon. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, it, was, it was nice in that they it, it was it's a way of talking to other people that you may not necessarily like. Now it's like, oh, you're you're flagging yourself as somebody that's interested in talking to other people and negotiating, possibly having a scene. Uh, gotcha. And the other thing was, instead of having this little sticker here, they offered a cloaking device if you were like an anxious person and just didn't want to be engaged with, but still wanted to participate, so you could approach people, but they couldn't approach you. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. no one took any. Uh, really? But, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, it's, it's nice to have it, but. Yeah, it's probably best that I, I stayed out of this because I'm also one of those like weird completionists that was like, I need to do everything. <laughs> exactly. Oh, as, no. as you did the things, as you did these programs, these holodeck programs with people, you would get these numbers and essentially there's some sort of like drawing or possible prize at the end or something. I don't know, but um, it, it may be one of the, the toys that the uh, person built. Um, oh, OK. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they apparently have started their own silicone molding sort of thing and they have very, very alien shaped dildos. That, uh, all solid, that, you know. solid. Yeah, most of them are. Yeah, is that <laughs> is that agreeable agony? I'm thinking. I, I don't know. Um, no, polyjuiced. Is polyjuiced. The, yeah, polyjuiced. Polyjuiced. I don't think I got to check them out. Now, yeah. could I have chosen to be a Vulcan and just it was not during that like once uh, however many years? Yeah, period. not by, during Ponfar. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm just like I'm not sorry, guys. So, yeah, all the Vulcan cards are very support cards. Like <laughs> yeah. live long and prosper was make sure that both of you drink plenty of water. That's oh, the whole nice. thing. Yeah, just like relax, you know, get rest and drink very plenty important. of water. The Vulcan neck pinch was just you know give somebody a neck massage. Oh, okay. yeah, very very nice, pleasing kind of nice. <laughs> yeah, but nice. 
there's like there's one that's like you know honor bound where the whole point is you, you basically uh, you don't come but you get the other person off. Uh, oh, oh, nice, <laughs> nice, nice. Uh, yeah, so there there were some there, yeah very thematic things. If you love the Star Trek universe, then it's uh, was there. Uh, oh, what's the thing that you can't win? Oh, uh, the, the Kobayashi Maru. Kobayashi yeah, Maru. there was not. We, I, I, I made a number of suggestions. I, you know, <laughs> uh, apparently they made a, a phaser vibrator. It had two settings, of course, stun and kill. Um, <laughs> oh, nice. But nice. I'm like, you need to have a modulated setting for the Borg that keeps changing it yeah, up. Yeah, <laughs> they can't get a, used to it. Right, they adapt. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Could I play like uh, late series Janeway, where I don't give a shit about the rules and uh, just, I just do mess with temporal yeah, paradoxes with the all the time? Because like, time agents anymore. just come by, just head in their hands. Oh, you're a menace, Janeway. Yeah. Just run around fucking up people's <laughs> scenes. <laughs> I suppose so. That could work. <laughs> That could work. You you could be uh, you could be Bacula's version of uh, a captain and just be unwatchable and completely. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> now, uh, one thing that I've noticed, and th- there's a, of course a very big dungeon here, and uh, I-, I thought it was one of those things like Vegas, where it's like we don't talk about what happens in the dungeon. Mm. But I noticed that I would just be walking around, and someone would run out of the dungeon like guys. <laughs> Someone's being whipped with an octopus. Everybody come. Yes. <laughs> yes, there is. There's a kill screen in Donkey Kong. So Let's go. You would have loved the, the LARP <laughs> thing because somebody described uh, – somebody was dressed as – oh, I can't remember. It was an 80s um, Batman character, the Robin that had replaced the first Robin. Uh, Jason Todd. Thank you, Jason Todd. <laughs> yes. See, I, I didn't know that one. Um, but there was Jason Todd. And now you and somebody, feel left out. A little bit. That's okay. <laughs> Jason Todd and somebody dressed as the, uh, the uh, Suicide Squad version of Joker or, right, or right. the Joker at that time. Uh, and they did a scene where they – Beat the Jason Todd with a crowbar, uh, <laughs> all, all of the all of the comic book, and they no. actually did like a whole like Joker game show thing and brought in other people and like had them do like various <laughs> tasks and all that. So oh, yeah, we could have done a saw scene. Yeah, oh, we could. yeah, you totally could. There's still plenty of time. I think the dungeon's open until five or all six. All right, let's go. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> we need a bear trap. And we need. <laughs> no wait, hold on. <laughs> Maybe we could re-engineer the foam in this thing into a bear trap. Yeah, there we go. All right, let's work on it. Let's go. (laughs) So we also like to geek out on this show. I know we do. We just did that, Uh, but we do a segment called "What You Watch and What You Read and What You Play," where we talk about what we're watching, what we're reading, what we're playing. Sounds good. So Shane, I'll ask you first. What have you been watching? You watch anything good? Um, So I've been going through uh, the the newer Battlestar Galactica again. uh, Okay. Because my fiance hasn't seen it, Um, and so it's it's been entertaining to watch somebody else react to that as as you go through it. Right. Um, Have you guys watched that one? No, I, no, it's one of those. I tend not to watch anything on TV unless it's over and I'm told the ending's good. It's it's way over. It's yeah, been over. Right, right. But yeah. I I thought it had a very disappointing ending. I, hmm, yeah, that's that's true. <laughs> Season four gets real weird. Yeah, because um, I ever since I watched, I binged Dexter. Yeah, and after that, it's like. If it goes downhill, I don't want to be part of it because I was so furious that, by the last season of Dexter. That's like, fair. I actually mm-hmm. bailed uh, in season three with the Trinity Killer and John Lithgow. Well, that's the best season. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think I started watching season four, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm just going to hit the eject button, and be done. that's it. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to assume it ended there and just move but, on. But as I mentioned earlier, I have that completionist thing in the back of my mind where it's just like, no, I need to be able to check off the box that I finished all this miserable it's, crap. It's <laughs> a very important thing in kink to know when you're done and know when you're satisfied. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and not to just push it for no reason. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and apparently in, in watching shows as well. <laughs> yeah. Yes. That, that's the, where the true masochism comes. It's like, yeah. Oh, that's bad. I have to keep going, though. That's a very different form of predicament bondage. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yeah. Watch all of text. <laughs> Please. Yeah. No, don't. So how far into the new uh, Battlestar are you? Uh, so, I mean, I, I've obviously finished it. We got to season three just as things start to get weird. And okay. we, we took a break there and we'll, we'll come back to the rest of season four at some point. Um, <laughs> Will you? Yeah, we will. Um, you know, it's it's. Uh, we've been playing the board game, which is a. It's yeah. <laughs> that is the appropriate response. Well, I've heard great things. It is, but you can't just invite random people that don't know the show yeah. or aren't willing to sit down for three to four hours to play yeah. the single <laughs> the, playthrough of the board game. Yeah, the, the Battlestar Galactic board game is really good the third time you play it. But the first two times is a miserable learning experience that you have to suffer through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know what it is? It's also, um, you know, 
it's it's a fantasy flight game and it has mm. a bajillion little tiny pieces that can all get lost so you need like yes. somebody sober at the party to like find all the <laughs> yeah. pieces at the end and put it's them not away a let's get drunk and play <laughs> uh, you know Star. i was playing Saul Tai in one of my playthroughs he's he's the alcoholic xo on the ship and so oh. i was like well i just i'm gonna, I'm gonna role play this and just continue <laughs> to pound drinks um and i was one of the cylons right from the start and so i just was completely ineffectual and drunk which is exactly what Salt High is through most of the show. Yeah. Um, and so it was perfect because they're like, oh, you just must not be interested in the game. And ultimately it was like, you've been one of them the whole time. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, the drinking was just a cover. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me, me we'll actually have that issue a lot when we play board games where we also have to role play. Mm -hmm. like, so it was like, uh, like, I know it would be real helpful if I did this, but my character yeah, would do that. Decided. This yeah. <laughs> and that, you know, anytime I was faced with a difficult decision in my most recent playthrough, I was um, – um, Admiral Kane, which she is a, a, a maniac, hell bent on killing Cylons. That's her whole thing. Yeah, you know, sacrifice civilians to do it. Sure, why not? Gotcha, uh, gotcha. And so, any possibility of that, like, it was just like, oh, it's a hard decision. All right, what's the most bloodthirsty, crazy one? And I'll pick that one. <laughs> uh, it, it does. It does make your decision making process much easier. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. Uh, William, you see anything good that you want to talk about? Uh, see, I, I can only think of Thor Ragnarok, but I don't want to How is it? It's so good. Okay, I've, I've heard really very like... mixed reviews. Either people were like, really? eh, I, or they loved I've it. I've yet to hear a single person say a bad word about it. So. Really? It's, yeah. I mean, it, it's funny. It's very a la Guardians of the Galaxy more so than... So, I mean, not that any of the Marvel movies are too, too serious. Yeah, but, they, yeah. they do a good job staying away it's, from DC's territory there. Yeah, it yeah. feels very... Rather than the darkness of Ant-Man. Yeah, yes. <laughs> you, you know, there were there were some physics problems in Ant-Man. Oh, a few. No, no, there were not. <laughs> I think I love, though, they're like, oh, it maintains the same mass. I'm like, well, how does he have... Uh, okay, spoilers, can we can we do spoilers? I mean, Ant-Man's been, Ant yeah, Ant been out long enough. I know, it's been out long enough. He has a tank on his keychain through the whole thing, right? Right, right. Supposedly, the items retain their mass. Yeah, that'd clearly be that old man I, is a fucking superhero because <laughs> he's able to just lug a tank around yeah, on his belt. It's like, not just because he's also a full grown man weight riding on ants. Yes, that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it should be Smush Man, not Ant Man. <laughs> yeah. Keep killing my friend. I'm sure yeah. that's a thing here too. Yeah. Smush Man. I'm sure someone someone wants into to Smush do. Man. Yeah. yeah. What I personally can't wait for. I, I want to find someone that hasn't seen any of them and wants all the the movies come out i mm -hmm. want to make someone watch it in chronological order because i think that would be like this very crazy experience <laughs> where it's like all right well first you meet captain america and that's really cool yeah and then just like now I... would you do the sh series as well like agent no, peggy the carter series and i'm gonna leave out all just because right. that would be too long <laughs> but it's just like yeah you get this really cool story with uh with captain america and then out of nowhere it's jeff bridges in a car with some woman and they're hanging out, and then out of nowhere, she just dies. <laughs> and Jeff Bridges is gone. And, and then it's some bugs on a missile. <laughs> so... <laughs> I think it would be a very interesting experience you to mean watch. You you're chopping up the movie. Yeah, chop okay. all the movies up oh, so it's dear. in chronological. Every element. And so, yeah, so it's all in chronological. And then in order. the middle of it, there's just this one Guardian scene, and you're like, I guess we're coming back to this in yeah. like 20 years. Yeah, like, yeah there's just a is. kid. <laughs> so the kid gets abducted He'll be back out. back eight hours we'll from deal now. We'll later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I kind of remember that. <laughs> now, what about the things where, like, yeah, that would, oh, wow. Yeah. That, yeah. And then there's there's bugs on a missile out I, of nowhere. I do like the callbacks that Agents of Shield does with that, where where they yeah. they reference like, oh yeah, that happened to the movie, and we'll get back to that later. Yeah, yeah, a Agents of Shield, I had to give up on. I really? tried really hard. Where'd you get to in it? Uh, they split up Fitz and Simmons, and I was like, screw this. Okay, yeah, that's uh, that's fair. Yeah, yeah, and that was that, that was we had already given up twice at that <laughs> point. I was like, I'm back one more time. Come on, Agents. It's like of a Shield. really bad relationship. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like I can control you. You're hurting me. I can yeah. control you. You're hurting. Yeah. And the the problem is they keep like super implying that Agents of Shield is going to be important because ABC tried to cancel it. They were like, this show, no one's watching this show. It's not very good. We need to get rid of it. Oh no. And then I guess Stan Lee was like, no, it's part of the master plan. <laughs> oh, dear. So like, well, all right, we got to keep it. Where, where does humans factor in and all that? I don't know. <laughs> I, yeah, I haven't watched any of it, so I have. Which, by the way, we're getting off topic, but meh, yeah. whatever. Uh, Disney's planning on buying Fox. Yeah. I was like, that's a great way to get the X-Men back, because they were never just going to sell them <laughs> X-Men. It was just like, you know what? We own you now. That, that Come would be, with us. That would make a very interesting Deadpool film. Exactly. That's what we're waiting for, right. really. And because, uh, like, I love that. I think what made Deadpool kind of special is the fact that they could only use like six X Men. Yeah. <laughs> and the fact that they brought that up in the movie. 
<laughs> so like the studio couldn't have. Anyway, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I hope they do an Austin Powers with mutants, and they're just like, ah, mutants that we've all known about the whole time, right, guys? <laughs> What? Shut oh, up. yeah, I guess they would own, like, a bunch of other things. This is going to screw up Kingdom Hearts even more. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I really I, – have you seen that? It's an image of uh, Sora in front of Deadpool, and Deadpool simply saying, you've got to be shitting me. <laughs> no, I haven't seen that. <laughs> that would be fantastic. That would be – that, yeah, that should be, that should be the next Kingdom Hearts game. I would yeah, be I able would to sit it. through the whole damn thing this time. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> Kingdom Hearts was good when I played it the first time, and then the remix came out. Yeah, like, you to... know – 15, yeah. Yeah, I was yeah. trying to play it again, and it's not there. Because <laughs> no. the thing is, the time between PlayStation, uh, from PlayStation 2, from Kingdom Hearts 2 and whenever Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out, I am an entirely different human being. Yeah, it's it's been <laughs> so a, it's a almost that generation. I'm like, wait, I've changed as a person. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, th- those games are not great coming back to. Uh, real quick, because I want to talk about the thing I've been watching, because uh, I've been trying to binge all the Cube movies. Have you guys seen Why? Cube? Oh, a I've long time ago. But Cube, baby. I have not seen Hyper Cube. Yeah, Cube 2, Hyper Cube. Oh, man. Talk about just watching the wheels fall off of something. Uh, if you guys have not seen Cube, it is a math movie <laughs> where they lock, Exciting. they lock a bunch of people in this, this weird cube uh, and they slowly realize that every person in the cube uh, serves a purpose in escaping the cube. Okay. Uh, so, like, one person is a math wizard, one person is, uh, uh, like, a cop that's, like, meant to figure stuff out, one person escapes prisons, is okay. like, is one thing. Uh, and they realize that all the, the rooms they're walking into have numbers, and if they're prime numbers, there's a there's a trap in it. Okay. So they can't go in there if there, there's a trap in it. Spoiling and, the whole movie now. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But then they they slowly start to realize that it's more complex than that, and they run into someone who's autistic who can calculate things very quickly. Oh, okay. Uh, and one thing that I, I caught uh, after, like, thinking about it is the, the movie opens with, like, this monk waking up, and the monk's just like, oh, this is a weird place. <laughs> Walks into a room and immediately just gets killed. Okay. And I realized that he was supposed to be like the religious center that kept everyone. <laughs> oh, dear. So since he wasn't there, everyone freaks out. And I was like, oh, this is actually this is a solid film. That, I like, liked Cube. That huh. was well thought out. Let's see what happens in Hypercube. No, Hypercube. <laughs> Hypercube is the idea that they're now in the fourth dimension and there's alternate timelines. No. So like they'll open doors and find their own dead bodies in there. Okay. Uh yeah, but, it which re- wasn't executed well. No, like nobody has a purpose. It's just kind of <laughs> like, ah, we threw all these people in a hypercube and so see it's what a, happens. It's almost like a Rick and Morty interpretation of hypercube. Yeah, of kind of yeah. where it's just ruined. Yeah, <laughs> it's just ruined. Just driven into the ground with absurdity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's like it's one of those things where they gave them a budget, so it's like, all right, we can do s- like special oh, no. effects now. So all the practical effects are gone, and now it looks like bad CGI, mm-hmm. right? Uh, As opposed to like good practical yeah. effects. Yeah. So I'm excited. There's a third one, which is Cube oh, Zero, dear. and it's a prequel. So they're like, no, the, we have Cube to get us, we get further. That's what it's called. It's called Cube Zero, and they need to get away from Hypercube. It's so. a diet cube. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be good. <laughs> Low calories. Yeah, no, no calories sugar. at all. Yeah, aspartame <laughs> just full of aspartame. <laughs> Uh, so we also talk about what we're reading. Okay. Are you reading anything good? Um, I have been meaning to. I haven't been reading a whole lot. I, I do. I do books on ta- like you know audio books yeah, on anything. So we also accept podcasts because we yeah. cheat a lot on this show. Yeah. Uh, then uh, Lavar Burton reads. Have you guys listened to that? No. Yeah. So it's it's Lavar Burton just. Do reading you mean short reading fiction. Rainbow? No. So it's it's a, it, the oh, the first uh, episode of the podcast. It opens up with Lavar Burton saying like, "Why do I want to do this?" It's because a lot of people write into me and say they have a, a bucket list item of having. Lavar Barber and read them a bedtime story, <laughs> and so that's weird. <laughs> well, you know, no, he was he was Rainbow the reading guy. Rainbow guy. I know, but still, and also I... Jordy LaForge, which I know you don't know. Oh, yeah, I know he's know Jordy. Jordy. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> come on now, but like, I wouldn't come up to somebody and be like, "Hey, my dream is for you to do this menial task for me." No, but like he was. Be... I know who he is. Yet, like I understand <laughs> that. But like, I wouldn't run up to Mark Summers. And I was like, I really want you to dump a thing of whipped cream on me. No, that makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> I'm sure someone here wants that. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, of oh, course we're I... running Double Dare next time. Of yeah. Oh, yeah. That. that would be good. All the people that like the goop stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my God. There was we're a, totally there was a doing sticky this science thing. <laughs> yeah. It was a sticky science thing that someone did. I didn't get a chance to go to it. Yeah, ours it. will have no learning whatsoever. Okay, good. Yeah, that, <laughs> don't that, worry. Yeah. Um, Can we rent the dungeon for panels? Set tarps up. 
I know they set up tarps for things like the the wax social. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. And there was some sort of pumpkin display. I, I did not see. I did with the pumpkins. I did, there's another example of someone running out of the dun- dungeon, and I heard she's wearing a pumpkin. It's very artistic. <laughs> Okay. I, I think the next time we're here, I'm going to cosplay Professor Quarrel in just every 15 minutes. Hmm. He's a troll hmm. in the dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to do the whole collapse and everything, yeah, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like, this guy will not stop. <laughs> Although, Get out of here. He's Voldemort, technically. <laughs> yeah. Well, that would be great if you could do like the special effects makeup on the back yeah, of the head, too, when you take the turban off and everything. <laughs> right. <laughs> Don't yeah. oh, good... judge me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. Um... Wait, what is Lavar Burton? Uh, <laughs> so Lavar Burton read recently. Yes. Uh, no, the the first episode is fantastic. It's a it's a short fiction called Kin. Um, Kin. Yeah, it's it's like a sci fi piece, and it is you know it's it's usually done in thirty forty minutes or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it's just phenomenal. Yeah. Uh, if if you you know have like a thirty minute commute, just put it on, and you will you will arrive having a much better experience on your commute. <laughs> um, so it, it's it's pretty good. Some of the some of the pieces I didn't love, but it's uh it's pretty nice to listen to. So gotcha, yeah. gotcha. I'll have to give that one a shot because yeah. I, I love audiobooks. So mm-hmm. yeah. Um have you listened to the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy read by Stephen Fry? Yes. No I haven't. <laughs> Stephen Fry, yeah. That's let me, just... let me say, that's my favorite book is Hitchhiker's Guide. Yeah the so. first one's by Stephen Fry read by Stephen Fry and then all the subsequent ones are Martin Freeman. Okay. So, you know, it's, um, yeah, I mean, having the voice of the guide from the film reading the yeah. book is just mm-hmm. wonderful. Oh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Christmas present idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Will, have you read anything good? Yeah, I, no one here will know what we're talking about, but frequent podcast listeners might remember oh. uh, Little Lived Cartoon Series Ultra Force. Y- oh, I've yes. heard of it. That I I frequ- it's this thing that I frequently think I made up. <laughs> and then Noah reminds me that it was in fact a like seven episode TV show. Yes, but okay. it was based off of a comic series by this group called Malibu Comics that I learned back in the day before DC and Marvel owned everything. Right, there was a couple of like the Sony or the uh, Dreamcast of like <laughs> comics. Like, well, maybe there'll be another company. There won't be. Yeah, yeah it's, we didn't know it's the last one. But they had a pretty. They had a couple of uh, uh, series, and one of them was called Exiles, and. One of the guys in Ultra Force was one of the Exiles members, and the idea is it's it's this parody of a bunch of people get superpowers. Someone's like, we should make a super team of them, but okay. they're not trained, they're not military, they've never worked together before, and they all die. <laughs> <laughs> to the point where the last, aside from this zombie guy who effectively can't die and he becomes an Ultra Force guy, <laughs> episode five, the last remaining members get blown up by a supervillain and die. They had... Uh, <laughs> let you pre-buy episode six so that you didn't have any idea this was happening and then five was the last episode (laughs) and then they just gave everybody their money back and they're like yeah they're all dead now sorry fooled you (laughs) wow that is that is it was amazing like i knew that going into it but i was like this is fantastic i I need to ultra force exiles is the like malibu comics yeah you could get it online because they're not a company anymore (laughs) it it reminds me a little bit of uh shinesman have you seen that It's it's an anime no. Um, it's like an OVA. It's like only six, six, seven episodes, something like that. Um, it's essentially like Power Rangers, but all their colors suck. Um, <laughs> so it's like salmon pink, moss green, <laughs> sepia. Yeah, like, oh, nice. yeah. And so it's essentially, and, and you know, it's one of those ones that's dubbed in a hilarious way as well. All right, cool. Um, very much like Ghost Stories. If you guys have seen that, I know Ghost Stories. Yeah. Um, so it's it's pretty entertaining. Uh, if you if you I'll like something you goofy versions of superheroes, and then Shinesman is pretty good. Cool. Cool. We're a little low on time, so I'll skip my reading and I'll okay. ask you what you're playing. Um, what I've been playing lately. Oh, what, what I've, I have been playing something. Oh, I, I got back into Civilization Beyond Earth. Ooh, that'll <laughs> suck you in. It, yeah, it's one. There's of, yeah. a lot of Civ talk on this podcast. Oh, is there? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Have you guys played Beyond Earth? I haven't played Beyond no, Earth. I, no, six is the last. Okay. Uh, yeah, Beyond Earth was between five and six. Um, and I think Sid Meier's has completely dropped it because it just did so poorly. <laughs> They were like, yeah, it's not canon anymore. Um, yeah, so, well, it's it's like set in the future. They they always allude to the great mistake, and Earth gets all fucked up, and they send uh, <laughs> they basically send ships off into space to go fuck up another planet because that's what you do. Uh, nice, and then nice. you have three different paths you can go. You can go like kind of the uh, the biological, very uh, avatar sort of people, where you know you're part of the planet sort of thing. Gotcha. You can go. Um, 
the uh, Promised Land victory where you pull people back from Earth and basically bring all the, the poor people that were left behind on Earth <laughs> back to the New World. Nice, nice. And then there is the Supremacy victory, which is uh, you, you basically become a bunch of religiously fanatic robots that go to uh, save everybody, in, in large air quotes, by, uh, by turning them all into robots that have been uploaded into the uh, hive oh, mind. Oh, nice. Because, Singularity. Well, you can save them. Get it? Uh, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. That's neat. Yeah, so it's, it's it's kind of fun, but also you know it's not got a ton of depth. It's not got that callback with playing right. Civ games where mm-hmm. you're like, hey, look, I've invented you know computers with no catapults or anything. The, <laughs> does it have the most important element where you can talk to all your advisors and one of them's Elvis that everyone disagrees no, with? Oh no, there are, uh. the advisors are just AIs and computers and stuff for the most part. But the uh, the other the other leaders are pretty interesting kind of folks. So yeah. they, yes. is there a space Gandhi? Ah. Uh, Maybe, yes, yeah, sort of. I guess you could say the one is a space Gandhi. It is hilarious when space Gandhi goes all like turn everyone into robots, sort of. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is, yeah. And it's kind of randomized. So you get all the different characters going different like paths sometimes. And so mm-hmm. sometimes they're like, you know, and they have propensities to go one way or another. I think the closest to space Gandhi is like the space Africa. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. I may have talked about this before, but do you know why Gandhi is so uh, yes. war crazy? The, the code, um, it, it continues to make him more and more peaceful. And then it, I think it hits 255. Yeah, and the it original zero. goes back. And then it yeah. flips. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he, his aggression goes down to zero. And then when it goes to zero, it's a code error and reads as 255, the maximum aggression. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, it's just and then they kept it in the game after the, the first yeah, few. They joke. were like. They were it's like, fun. yeah, it was silly. We did it. And then it's like, oh, God, Gandhi's got nukes. <laughs> Gandhi's got the nukes. We got to get out of here. <laughs> it's in the planet. Yeah. <laughs> You play the goodwill? No, we can, we can skip it. Oh, okay, all no, right. No, no. Uh, I, I've been playing Hue. Have you guys heard of Hue? I, I recommend this. Is, is that like the LED light company? Uh, kind of, actually. Uh, <laughs> basically, you live in this world with no color, and then you discover colors. Oh, right, yeah. And then when you change the background, you can start to see more and more things. Yeah, I've heard of that. So, like, if you change the background it's to like a an color, indie game, right? yeah, yeah. If you like, there's an orange box in front of you, but if you change the background to orange, it blends in with the background. It's no longer there. <laughs> so it it is a beautiful indie game, very cool, and very well created. It's very the giver with the whole color thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. It's super cool. Yeah, I highly you recommend don't have to it. Read a lame book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the movie The Giver? No, no. It was, it was all right. All right cool. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get it confused with the reader. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Apparently, they're going to make a sequel, the the, the Giver sequel, oh, but really? as a film as well. Yeah. Well, that was... was Philip Seymour Hoffman, right? In the right. in the Giver, You're the English teacher. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking but about the actor, movie. not the author. Oh, see, I'm bad at this. Because yeah. <laughs> I was just saying he passed away, so I don't know how they would oh, make a sequel. Oh, yeah, I don't know. But I guess they could make a sequel to the book because I don't think he was in the book. Yeah, I don't think. In the, yeah, there's the book sequel too because there was the Giver, and then there's a uh, the Taker. The, no, yeah, I know. <laughs> that'd be too on the nose. Um, <laughs> I never said I was a good English teacher. Okay, that's something that's I true. need to correct a lot of that's people. That's fair. That's fair. So just M1. We just assume. Uh, so we end all of our podcasts with a game. Uh, oh, dear. And I usually tell our guests to bring a prize, but you had no yeah, idea. You were I had no idea. Here, yeah. so, uh, but I do need another person who wants to come up and play a silly game. So if anybody wants to come play a, a game with us, it's going to be much easier than Game the Gamer was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on up oh. here. <laughs> I like that you selected yourself. You're yeah. like, I'm doing it. Trolling the dungeon. I'm coming back just for that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sit down and introduce yourself by what name you're comfortable giving away and having recorded on microphones. Uh, the Good Robot Uses. The Good Robot Uses. <laughs> That's <laughs> fantastic. Bill yeah. and Ted, Bill two and people. Ted. <laughs> uh, so we're going to play a game uh, called uh, Blockbuster Pornhub. Uh, <laughs> I have a bunch of blockbuster movies here that I've retitled the way that Pornhub titles movies. <laughs> so I All will right. give you the Pornhub title, and you need to give me the actual title, okay? All right. All right, so well, we're going to start with you. I have 15 here. Give me a number between 1 and 15. Number 2. Number 2. Uh, nine men team up to destroy uh, the ring hole. Oh, uh, the Rings. Lord... that's my question. <laughs> I'm going to go with Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings is correct. <laughs> yeah. That's a point for Will. I didn't know there were turns. Uh, how, now how, does the, it, how does it work? Like, yeah, the we... good, we'll, we'll, we'll give oh, everyone. Oh, it's in a rotation. Yeah, I it's see. a rotation. I see. So, okay. uh, good Robot Us is, uh, give us a give me a number. Which one would you like? Seven. Number seven. Uh, uh, man, so much. Uh, man spends. My handwriting is so terrible. Man spends so much time deep in the hole, he starts to hallucinate. 
Man spends so much time deep in the hole, he starts to hallucinate. Hmm. What do you think, good robot usses? Shining popped into my head, but I know that's wrong. <laughs> it is not the Shining. Chance to steal from Shane. I wow, I have no idea. Um, let me take a blind guess it's at that. The shining. It's yeah. not the Shining. Apparently not. Yeah, yes. that's good. Process of elimination will help you out. Here. Yeah, a little bit. There's only a few more thousand films. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I don't know. The Ring. It is not the Ring. Right. Will I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Shawshank Redemption. We'll do not the King. Shawshank Redemption. Uh, it is The Dark Knight Rises. Okay. Uh, He's deep in that hole. I, yeah, I guess he did hallucinate. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's it's my favorite scene because Raj Al Ghul shows up to lie to him and give him wrong information. <laughs> Uh, so, Shane, you get to pick a number, Shane. All right. Um, let's go with 15. Number 15. Uh, guy beats his meat and then fights a man for his belt and purse. <laughs> Rocky? That is Rocky. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Point for Shane. Uh, Will, give me a number. Uh, number one. Number one. Son shows dad how to give it to mom. <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh, uh, love actually I don't it's know not love actually <laughs> uh, good robot usses? can you repeat it one more time yes yeah, son shows dad how to give it to mom <laughs> silence is always good for the fuck <laughs> great all the dead air <laughs> <laughs> okay I'll oh. take it out in my head you don't have to whisper if you're going to yeah, figure that, it out. You can think it to the microphone. Yeah, I got nothing. No, no, nothing. no guess? No nothing. Guess? Shane, wait, Shane's got a chance. Uh, 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 I have no idea. I'm just going to do The Incredibles. I don't know. It is not The okay. Incredibles. Audience? Guess from the audience. Back to the future. It's Back to the Future. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's. Wow. Uh, good robot usses. Pick a number for me. Which number? 13. Number 13. Uh, let's see. Uh, crippled man teaches young man how to d- play with balls. <laughs> Let me read that again. Oh, oh yeah. I, crippled yeah, man <laughs> teaches young men the techniques for playing with balls. Dodgeball. It is dodgeball. <laughs> Patches a hula hand. That's another point. <laughs> for good robot. Yeah, I got one. Shane. All right. Pick a number. All oh, right. Uh, fourteen. Number fourteen. Uh. Man man penetrates dark hole and then spies on his daughter in her bedroom. I know. I'm guessing it's got some sort of time travel element with the okay. black hole. Ooh, All right, good, figuring good. Figuring it out. Yeah. I'm, try, I'm just trying to figure Figuring out how the game works. Yeah. Oh, man. It's all right if you haven't seen this movie. It's not very good. Uh, it's not very good. <laughs> that helps. Oh, <laughs> that does actually help. Is it? Oh, shit. is that that space one that yeah, just came out recently? You can't think of the name, but you know what it, it is. I know what it is. Uh, Interstellar. Yes! yes! Spoilers for Interstellar. Yes. <laughs> I'm noticing there's a scene with, with holes here. Yeah, yeah. It's the easiest way to go with this. It helps with the writing, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Will, shoot me a number. 12. Number 12. Uh... Big black bull in bondage squeezes small white man to help him fix his dick. <laughs> hmm. Hmm. Is this a Pixar film? <laughs> <laughs> oh, now I'm being quiet. Um, <laughs> I got nothing. I don't. No I don't idea. know. No, no idea. idea. Got me. Good robot usses. Big black bull. In bondage, squeezes small white man to fix his dick. What's that Samuel L. Jackson movie? Snake moan something. Oh, something. black snake moan. Yeah, it's <laughs> not black snake moan. Head. Oh man, yeah. That I... would have been a real easy one to include on this one, though. <laughs> <laughs> Samuel L. Jackson light, locks up a woman. <laughs> yeah, uh, in the interest of time and saving, I have no idea. Oh, it's the Green Mile. No, oh, yeah, I didn't see. Uh, you guys yeah, never see the see. Green Mile? I... The movie's great. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he cures his kidney stones. Uh, that's, okay, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no one's impressed with you. <laughs> it's a good movie. Guys. All right. Then. Uh, good robot houses. Give me a number. Nine. Number nine. British teens learn how to flick and swish from all elders. Oh, 
any of the Harry Potter movies. Harry, Which no, one I need the want? specific Harry Potter movie. No, I'm uh, kidding. <laughs> <laughs> read, that, read it again. No, you no, got, you got, you got, got it. You're fine. Right. Right. I, I, I think Flick and Swish was um, the first Chamber. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Wingardium Leviosa. It's the first one? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah, See, Wingardium I, Leviosa. Good, I wasn't being scored on that. Philosopher's <laughs> Stone. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it depends on where you're at it, right? Shane, give me a number. Uh, three? Number three. Uh... Man must prove to his wife he can still cut it while a photographer watches. Ooh. That, that's a lot of films, actually. Uh, I don't know. Is that Bruce Almighty? I don't know. That is not Bruce I mean, Almighty. I, I'm just guessing. Hmm. I bet I could have come up with a real good that one. That would have been Bruce good. Almighty. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure. Will? Uh, I don't know if this is the name of this movie. One Hour Photo? Not One Hour uh, Photo. <laughs> that was Again, my guess. Good one. <laughs> that was my guess. Is that the name of that? There's that, that's that Robin Williams one, yeah. where he's yeah. a serial killer or something. Yeah, no, that was he's Mike just S. weird. Oh, he's just weird. <laughs> I think he's just like he's, I haven't seen it, so I don't know. He's obsessed with a child and feels like his uncle. It's it's a weird movie. <laughs> It'd be better if he were a serial killer. Right? Yeah, okay. yeah. It'd be less creepy. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just uncomfortable. <laughs> Do you have a guess though? No, I also had one hour photo. <laughs> uh, it's Saw. Uh, Man must prove you to yeah, his wife. I've only seen Saw it. 2, which was basically Saw the D&D version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very true. <laughs> uh, that's going to do it for the game. I forgot to keep score. Uh, but we had a fun time. <laughs> the points don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we have prizes. Yeah, no prizes, though. Prize, so yeah. matters. Yay! Yay. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming up here. Do either of you have plugs that you guys want to stop? Talk about no, not particularly. Thank you, though. He mean he means shows. Not I yeah. Mean, I know. Be careful. We're, we're, we're oh yeah, at, yeah, yeah. That's a good yeah. point. That's a good point. Yeah. No, I, I don't. I know neither. None of the above. <laughs> neither although, neither although things to plug this whole su- suit into. But all know. right, got gotcha. you. <laughs> got gotcha. you. Uh, thank you so much for coming out to the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. We do this every week. You can check this out on Plus Two Comedy I'm about to cough. Professional. <laughs> I fought it off, guys. I defeated it. Cool. <laughs> Uh, we also record this live uh, every Thursday at Gamers Vault in Medford, New Jersey, if that's near anybody and you want to come <laughs> and see that. Uh, thank you to Voltage for not showing up yeah. <laughs> to be a guest on this show. Uh, so be sure uh, to follow us on uh, YouTube and also on Twitch. We're on Twitch. We usually Twitch this show, but we didn't want to record while we're here. We yeah. felt like that would be bad to have video cameras here. Uh, also be sure to give us five stars on iTunes. Five stars on Stitcher. Vote for us on podcastland.com. Make us the podcast of the month. And as always, thank you to Bree Larson for making the show possible. This has been the Plus Two Comedy Podcast. Thank you guys so much. <laughs> 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 <laughs>